So welcome to the Exceed MPI workshop. I'm John Urbana coming to you from Pittsburgh Supercomputing Center. This is uh, the workshop that uh, most uh, excites me as a parallel programmer because this is the most powerful of all the parallel programming techniques. The tools that are available to you are incredibly, incredibly friendly and useful. Uh, that's the good news. Uh, the bad news is that the debuggers are pretty much proprietary. So we'll get onto that in a second. But the two classes of tools that you want to use to help your programming are debuggers and profilers. And this is not just true of parallel programming. It really should be true of serial programming too. People just don't use these great, wonderful, friendly tools. And they spend so much time, they waste so much time fighting with codes uh, when they could use these. Uh, and it's not like some of these has a reputation of being unfriendly. And, and it's true that in a long time ago, the buggers were command line based and you had to spend some time learning them and mastering them and profilers can be tricky to link into your code. Uh, that's no longer true. These things are usually very trivial to get up and going and they're GUI based and I'm gonna show you that. Now the debuggers uh, for doing parallel coding, there are really only two of them that are, that are worthwhile at all. Uh, they're both very good. Uh, and they are both proprietary and somewhat expensive. So that's the good and the bad news. And there really, there really is no alternative. So, you know, it's like people try to use, you know, parallel DB, DB to GDB debugger or whatever. They're, they're, they're horrible uh, and, and they are very primitive. Whereas these are wonderful, nice GUI based tools. So uh, this is the only time in any of my workshops, anything we present where I talk about proprietary software because I very much, as you can tell, I'm a huge fan of standards based stuff, open standards things that are portable and accessible and you can install on your laptop. Uh, so this is the one exception I make. That's why I broke this out as kind of a separate talk and I still won't spend a lot of time on it because it, I regret the fact that that's the reality, but it is the reality. Now, the good news is that they're incredibly great tools. Uh, so they're friendly to use. Uh, and so you don't have to invest a lot of time in learning them and you know, their particular environments. Uh, and the other good news is that because they're so good, they're licensed by almost any serious kind of high performance computing center. So you probably have no problem getting access to them. As a matter of fact, you definitely know because they're on bridges, for example, we have BDT on bridges and you have access to bridges and you can get a startup proposal on bridges. Uh, any big HPC machine is gonna have one of these too. And you can get access, like I said, lots of programs to give you access to high performance computing platforms. So th that alone for software development is a reason if I didn't have access to one of these platforms, I was developing a parallel code, I would get access just for the debugging environment. Uh, they're easy to use. You pretty much just need to use the dash G option like you do use any other debugger and your code will now compile with the information you need to fire them up. Uh, and they also both, because they're GUI based, they have these nice windows and they're running remotely on machines. Uh, they will by default try to pull up an X window to, to serve you windows remotely from the supercomputer onto your laptop or whatever you're using. Uh, X windows these days are incredibly laggy and slow. Uh, which is a big reversal. 20 years ago, X Windows applications were perfectly usable. And now computers are so much faster and X Windows applications are just so laggy, they're unusable. Uh, fortunately, the uh, companies have recognized this and also make a uh, client that you can put on your desktop for free. So even though the licensed software, the debugger is running on the supercomputer, you can download a little client on your desktop that gives you the GUI. So you can click around the windows I'm about to show you on your laptop. Uh, it's very easy to install that. So here's the kind of window you get with a debugger. And if you use any other serial debuggers, it should look very familiar. It's a nice friendly environment. Here's your source code. And you can just click a run button to run. You can click a breakpoint to tell it where to stop. So I've selected a breakpoint here to stop. As a matter of fact, uh, so there's my breakpoint. I wanted to generate that uh, earlier, that graph I showed you the Laplace code, the temperature distribution. I wanted to see what it looked like at uh, 3,200 time steps right before it's about finished. So I set a breakpoint here, but it's even a conditional breakpoint. If you look down here, I say only stop at uh, 3,200 time steps. So if iteration equals 3,200. So you can do some nifty stuff, like tell the program only stop under certain conditions at certain places. And again, good debuggers can do this in general. But what makes this a parallel debugger is this right here. When I'm running on the Laplace code, I'm looking at all four PEs, because as we know, we're not running one code, we're running four codes. And so to say this code is stopped on this line isn't quite right. It's stopped on four different places and they might all be on this line. They would be since I set the breakpoint on the same line and they all got there, but they could be stopped in different places when I stop the code, they could be doing different things. And so I can switch between the different PEs here by clicking on these buttons. That's what makes this a parallel debugger because I can easily switch back and forth between different processes. And again, there are a few primitive tools like PGDB and that that you can theoretically do this too, but it's all from a command line and it's, it's very painful to keep track of what's going on. And furthermore, while it might work with four PEs, 
when you get into the case of 4,000 PEs, they fall apart. And that's why these are really the only two serious debuggers. Uh, because they can start to do stuff like here, show me anomalies of variables. So if I'm working on 4,000 PEs, I don't want to flip between, I don't get 4,000 buttons up here. This thing is program is too smart to do that. Instead, I can group PEs and I can look for variables that are anomalies that are different than others. So when you're working with large numbers of PEs, these debuggers have the tools to allow you to ferret out when something's broken. And so I can do something like this, like visualize the temperature array, where it went, and it put the temperature array back together for me. It made this thousand by thousand array that doesn't actually really exist because it's smart enough to know in parallel codes, you do things like domain decomposition. So it could stick these all back together. That's, that's extremely intelligent. That's not something that accidentally happens in that. Uh, so there are a lot of other nifty features that uh, the DDT has, and, and, and total view is not completely dissimilar. You can deal again with large numbers of PEs, by you know, not expecting you to click through 4,000 PEs, connect to running jobs, works well with hybrid codes. So if you've got a code that's also, you know, it's MPI plus X, it'll work with that. It can do memory debugging and it can also do message passing tracing. And so tracing messages is a useful thing when you're trying to figure out in a complex application where your messages are going. Now, the good news here is that some of the free profilers can also do nice message passing tracing. So here is a profiler, tau profiler, that can also capture message passing. So the profilers can't do the runtime debugging and look at the source code, but what they can do is capture after the fact uh, things like your message patterns and where your time went. And Tau is a great free one. It's very sophisticated and useful and pretty friendly to, to, you, to install and use with your code. And so here, for example, if we're doing nearest neighbor communications in 3D, this will be the kind of pattern we expect to see. And we can click on the, uh, the different uh, PEs and see how much the intensity of their message passing. We can look on the different PEs and see where they're spending their time. So I ran this on a code that had a pretty complicated, uh, uh, what was it doing? Um, I was doing an all gather and it was a pretty complicated uh, pattern. I wonder where the time went. I could see oh, every 16 PEs, one of them is spending a lot more time in this fold than others are doing. So you can capture a lot of very rich data very easily and visualize it in different ways. So there's lots of different ways to look at the data with these tools. Uh, now, profilers are, there are other profilers as well. Intel has uh, a pretty nice, powerful one. It's less for massively parallel stuff and more at the local node level, but it can also capture some MPI message passing. Uh, the Intel suite, Intel has a, a crazy, so Intel, again, in their weird flips, uh, they had a suite called the Parallel Studio that had a bunch of pieces to it that were hard to figure out, but VTune and Advisor and Trace Analyzer were some of those pieces that could do these kind of things right here and give you some nice profiling. Now they've switched the names of the whole Parallel Studio to be part of the one API suite. So it's even harder to track this stuff down. You really gotta keep notes to figure out what's going on. So this is now turned into the one API suite. I think the suite's what they call it, maybe studio, something like that. And within that, you'll find a bunch of different uh, utilities which overlap a lot. That's what's most confusing is you say, okay, which one's for doing message tracking? And it's like uh, all three of these. Um, so they overlap a lot in their capabilities, but, uh, but they're, they're, they're quite powerful, each one of them, uh, and they're very nice GUIs, and they can do a lot of stuff uh, very easily. And so you can figure out your message passing patterns and where time is being spent and whatnot. Uh, these are not so good for massively scaling up, but they're great uh, for a single node kind of optimization and debugging.